Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I painted this blood angel that you see behind me, which is actually the first blood angel I've ever painted and very likely the last blood angel I will ever paint. And it was a bit of a process to get here. As usual, I hope you enjoy seeing that process and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for primer, I actually use black spray paint. It's $2 a can at any hardware store and it works like absolute trash. Definitely don't recommend it. And I am going in with heavy violet and I'm watering it down pretty heavily. I'd say it's about half water, half paint. And I am wiping off the excess on my paper towel and just sloshing this around all over the place. There is no reason to be careful with this step. You just want to get it on, you want to get it all over the place and when it dries, it actually dries a lot darker than when you put it on. As you will see here, it's, it actually looks lighter on camera than it does in real life. I don't know, that's weird, but it's a lot darker <laughs> in real life. And then I am taking corn red and we are just going to start building volumes. And this is my size four Monument Hobbies brush. It just came in the mail the day that I was filming this. I love it so much. This is not sponsored. This is just me rambling on about irrelevant things. I really truly love this brush. It's so big. It comes to such a fine tip. But anyway, so all I'm doing here is just painting the guy. I'm leaving the deepest parts purple obviously and then i'm just doing layer upon layer upon layer it's decently watered down corn red has a good amount of pigment to it so you know we're going to be doing a lot of layers so it's really 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 important to water your paint to a pretty thin consistency i won't say the word glaze because last time i did someone said that's not a glaze and i get it i know a glaze is like really 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 thin but i don't know what you would call this it's just a very very watered down paint So when doing this, I have my paper towel on standby ready to wipe any paint that gets into the cracks because I absolutely hate recess shading and I try to avoid it at all costs. And if you are careful when you are layering the paint, you don't have to do recess shading at the end. So yeah, just be careful with it if it gets in the cracks, especially because it is so watery, just mop it back out with your paper towel. And what I'm doing right here is replacing some of the mid-tone because I went, I jumped really high up to corn red and some of the areas were just not blended enough for me. So I mixed purple with corn red and then replaced the mid-tones. And then we are jumping up to Mephiston red, which is a very bright, cheery, kind of Christmassy red. And again, we're doing the same thing. We're just building layers on layers and taking up less surface area each time. So when we're doing this, is it recording? I think, oh my God, it is, sorry. The button thing glitched a little bit. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, when doing this, you have to pick the areas that you want to be the bright spots and stick to it. You can't change your mind halfway. So try to visualize what you want it to look like. I know some people take pictures when it's just primed and identify the highlight points and then build on them from that. I don't need to do that anymore. But yeah, if you feel like, oh, this area should have been highlighted, then, you know, you have to kind of figure that out early on. Like here, for example, I realized the shadows were a bit too dark, and so I am just bringing the red further into it, and it's just feeling like a whole lot of purple at this point. So we're going to fix that, and I'm taking orange red, and I am just mixing the teeniest, tiniest little bit of that and putting it into the Mephiston red, and then we are going to be doing even more highlighting with that color.
All right, so this is where I spilled the color Ungor Flesh everywhere. There was a little blockage in my drop bottle and then I squeezed it out and it just all came pouring out and I tried to bucket it back into the bottle and it was just a really big mess. And in all the kerfuffle, I forgot to show the color, but it is Ungor Flesh, it's a Citadel paint and I am mixing that with our previous orangey color and I'm gonna edge highlight. It's the part I hate the absolute most. I am getting better at it. You probably already know, but just in case you don't, you want to use the side of your brush for this, not the tip. And sometimes on camera, I'm actually watching this. It looks like I'm using the tip, but I promise I'm using the side. It's just a weird angle. And I just do this over the most obvious places. I don't go over every single line because I feel like when you've built volumes through the paint job, going over every single line just kind of looks weird. I, I know it's a stylistic preference. Like if you follow the heavy metal style, that's the way that you do it. But I just don't. I just don't do that. So here I felt like on his thigh right here, I felt like the line came out too thick and it didn't match the rest of the lines. I like really, really thin lines. So all I'm doing is just replacing some of that base coat color carefully to make the line look better. And I think it's just worth taking the time to go back and fix things because that thigh was looking really crazy. Um, and then the same thing here. So this one I thought was too thick as well. So I'm just taking the purple color from underneath and just carefully lining it and trying to make it look better. Okay, this is where it starts to get more exciting. So this is Abaddon Black. You can use any black you want. And we are just blacking out the knee pad and some other key areas and the crest on the chest, you know, whatever. We're just blacking them out. And then we'll be taking a gray after this. It doesn't matter what gray, just add it to your black to make it a little bit lighter black, blackish gray. And then we're just going to be highlighting those areas. So we're just taking it, putting it onto the knee pad because I cannot handle flat blank surfaces that are just one color. It drives me crazy. I feel like I always have to add some volume. So I'm just gonna do that and then carefully doing this on the chest to bring out the shape of those wings and then move on. Okay, and then this is my lazy trick. So I just take black and I water it down quite a bit and I put it into the little areas between the armor because this way it'll still maintain the purple underneath, like the atmospheric kind of look of the purple, but it will make it darker and bring more shadow to it. So it looks like you spent a lot of time painting it, but actually didn't. You could probably also use contrast paint for this and it would work really well. All right, so this is whole red and we are gonna be doing the steel parts of the model. So this is parts of his gun and then on his backpack, there'll be some parts too. This is the same metal recipe I use, same steel non-metallic metal recipe I've used for my last few videos. So you've probably already seen it, but basically all I do is I just base coat in the whole red. It makes a really good um, base color for steel, surprisingly. And you just put it on and then you take any shade of gray. I use dark sea green, which is really weird. It doesn't look green at all in person or on camera. It is just gray. And I am going to be dry brushing that onto all of the areas that we just base coated with whole red. All right, then I'm taking pale gray blue and I am just going to be adding that right onto the paper towel where the other color was and kind of mixing them together in my dry brush and just putting that over the same area, but this time focusing more on corners and just being a little bit more careful with how I'm brushing it. This is fast forwarded, so I'm watching and it looks like I'm just going crazy, but I promise I'm being very careful as to not get the 
dry brushing all over our hard work on the armor so yeah this is a very tiny dry brush and i am just very carefully picking out the corners and then i am here replacing some of the shadow so i just took black and mixed it with whole red and made a thick glaze of it and i am just replacing some of those shadows so that the metal effect sells better because you need the dark areas to contrast heavily with the light areas i felt like that was lost a little bit with the dry brushing so just take a moment replace the shadows make the dark parts darker and then we will be taking the color cool gray blue again but this time i'm taking it on my brush and i will just be carefully bringing up the highlights All right, so this is pure white and I'm just gonna be taking this and putting it on an even smaller surface area just on the very tip tip tips to make that metal really sell. All right, we're just cleaning up a little bit, repainting the black part of the gun black because it got kind of messy with all of the uh, dry brushing that happened. And yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm not perfectly happy with it. I'm working on painting guns. Like I just, something about them is so hard for me. I don't know why. And um, so this is my super quick gold non-metallic metal recipe. It's Mornifing Round Scruffless, um, brown and white and this is a recipe specifically for when you need to make it sell as gold but you don't have a lot of surface area to do so so we're not going to do the full seven different shades to blend it into gold thing because we just don't have the space all we're doing is base coating with that first brown then taking the second brown and blending it into the first color and then you just take it up as much as you can until you get to an almost pure white and just do the tips of that and it's very simple it's not the highest quality gold by any means, but just for little emblems and things like this, like on Sisters of Battle when they have those little teeny tiny pieces on their armor, this is just what I use for that. All right guys, this color is called Park Green Flat and I am just going to be base coating both of the lenses with this color and I decided to do a very simple approach to take a very simple approach with the lenses because I filmed this all on the same day. I was feeling pretty tired and I didn't want to do glowing lenses or anything like that. So yeah, I just did that. And then I'm taking ice yellow and I'm applying that to the front half of the lens. And then that is it. After that, I'm just taking white on my brush and doing one little dot on the opposite side to be kind of like reflection type thing. This one came out really bad, but the one on the other side looks a lot better, so I'll probably take pictures from the other side. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go back and fix it. I don't know. I'm putting matte varnish over my decals. I did use Microsol and Microset for these. I took the feedback from everyone from my last video, and it did work a lot better for me. And I'm just putting, um, like I said, the matte varnish over top. And then I am taking XV88 and I decided after basing it to just do a little bit of dry brushing at the bottom to make this guy look a little dusty because it's just too much red for me. I was just trying to break it up. I just really couldn't stand how red it looked. Little flower, of course, and a black rim. And that is it, guys. Let me know what you think of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.